Hi, welcome along to Barbecue Life UK, the only YouTube channel dedicated to the Audi Camaro. My name's Tom and today we are cooking beef short ribs. So we've been able to find a local butcher that's starting to do more of the barbecue style cuts and I was able to pick up some short ribs in there the other week. So they was uh, as a set of four in the shop, I asked them to cut them in two because I don't need all four and I wanted to keep the price down just slightly. So I've got two bones in a set of short ribs. So first of all, we need to have a look at some trimming. So some people trim and some people don't. So I've looked at the, the fat on the top of these and it looks like fat that isn't going to be nice to eat. There's silver skin there as well. It's not a fat that's going to melt down. If you look through the marbling of the meat, you can see this is your intra muscular fat and this is going to melt down but this on the top this little cap on the top i don't think is going to melt down particularly well so i'm going to remove all of that so it's quite simple i just start to peel it away from one end and then when i start getting some resistance i'm just lazily running a knife as close to the edge of that fat and silver skin as i can so that i leave as much meat on these ribs as i possibly can so once that's completely off and that has exposed all this nice meat on the top, which we can get lots of flavour into. So, before I put some rubs on there, I want to talk about the membrane on the bottom. So on pork ribs, we always take the membrane off because it can become quite tough. On beef ribs, if you take the membrane off and you cook them nice and slowly, they tend to fall apart. So we're going to keep that membrane on these, which is what's going to help hold everything together. So... Now it's time to get our rubs on. So today I'm using the Rusty Barbecue Company's IPA rub. Now this stuff is absolutely fantastic. It's just been given two stars from the taste review board. So that's really good. There's also some other one star stuff over at the barbecue, uh, Rusty Barbecue Company. So make sure you go over there and check it out. Check out your social medias and you can see what's been said about these wonderful rubs because I've been an ambassador for the company for a little while and I'm blown away by the stuff that he brings out and this IPA one is absolutely fantastic and he's going to work really well on these ribs. So we're just going on, I'm going to put it on nice and liberally all over the top, making sure that I cover all the edges. I'm going to put a little bit on that uh, membrane on the bottom but not a massive amount because we're not going to be eating that so much and it's not going to be able to penetrate into the meat. So we get it nicely coated all the way around and all of the sides. And I want to let that rest for about an hour. Just so it can really get into that meat. We've pushed it in as much as we can. And it's going to help bring, bring the moisture out. Which is going to help give us a lovely bark as we're cooking. So while we've got that off to one side, we need to light our Camaro. So I'm using the Lecto um, charcoal again. I was sent a little while ago. And you need to to keep an eye out for the next video where I'm going to discuss the Lecto charcoal, whether I like it or whether I don't. This is my final cook to make my final decision, so keep an eye out for that future video. So I'm just going in with a couple of wax woodies, we're just going to get it lit. We want a nice bit of charcoal on the bottom and then I tend to top it up, up, up with um, some unlit on the top of that once it's taken and that's what gives me enough to get all the way through this cook because I'm expecting this cook to take maybe six or seven hours even though I'm doing it hot what is classed as hot and fast which technically isn't actually that hot when it comes to barbecuing so we're going to be dialing in our temperatures to around 150 degrees C and this is what we class as a hot and fast temperature so a low and slow temperature we're talking anywhere between 90 and about 105 and then we're taking it through up to what we class as a hot and fast as 150. So I've got that dialed in, to dial that in, it's about one finger width on the bottom vent, and the top vent is just over a quarter of the way open. And that's how I tend to get it to sit at 150. Different charcoals are gonna burn at different rates, and ambient temperatures are gonna affect this as well. So that is just a little guide to ballpark you in the right direction. So now that we've got that Camaro up to temperature we want to do smoking wood so the smoking woods I'm using today is I've got some bourbon um, barrel oak that I got I won a competition 
the box. So I won a competition from the Oak Bloke, and he sent me this lovely box full of barrel that the bourbon has been kept in, which is, as soon as I opened the box, it smelt unbelievable. So I knew full well I wanted to get on this on with the short ribs. I'm just gonna nestle that into the charcoal, and that is gonna ignite, get through the ignition stage, and then it will start to give us some nice clean smoke ready for cooking. The other thing that I'm using is I've got some cherry wood chips, also from Lecto. So I don't wanna be putting chips directly onto the charcoal because they're gonna be gone before we know it. I want a bit of a slower smoke out of them if I can get it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these on top of the deflector plate. The deflector plate's gonna get hot, that wood's gonna smolder. So I'm gonna get the smoke, a slower smoke out of these rather than dumping them straight into the coals where they're just gonna ignite and be gone in minutes. I'm gonna get a bit of a slower smoke out of these which is gonna give me more of a cherry flavor. So I've got all of this smoking wood in place. I've got a nice clean smoke and it's time to go on with these ribs. So we're gonna pop them in the center directly over the um, deflector plate and I'm gonna leave them there for two and a half hours. I'm not gonna to touch them. So two and a half hours later, we go back in and we have a look. So I was expecting more of a bark. So a little bit disappointed at the moment with the lack of bark on there. So I now want to just check for temperature. I want to see how far we've got. So I checked the temperature and it's already up to about 83 degrees, which I was really surprised by that it's got that high in two and a half hours. So I suspect it hasn't really hit a stall yet and that it's going to stall quite high, high on in this temperature rather than low on. I'm also checking for tenderness and at the moment they are still quite tough because we haven't cooked them enough. We haven't broken that meat down. So we're going to shut the lid and we're going to leave it until we get to the four hour mark. So another hour and a half and we're going to go in. And this is where I'm expecting them to start in to be nearly done. We've only got two ribs here rather than a four. If I was cooking a rack of four, then I'd be not expecting it to be done at a four hour mark, maybe a five, five and a half hour mark with those. But with a two, two bone uh, short rib, I'm thinking four hours is about right. So let's have a look around. We've got a nice bark set on there now. And we need to check our temperature and check for tenderness. So put my temperature probe in and it's sitting between 96 and 98, depending on where we are um, into the meat. And it is starting to tenderize. It's still not quite there in some places, but we are 95% there. So we shut the lid down for another half an hour. And that is where we're going to see where we are in a minute. So after that half an hour again, I went in with my probe and we're probing much more tender. So you know that because when you push the probe in, there's not a lot of resistance in, in the probe. You could almost drop it and it would just stick straight into the meat. So it's time to take it off. So we took it off, pop it on the side and I'm going to give it at least a 10, 15 minute rest just to chill out a little bit, let everything relax down. So after that 15 minute rest, give it a slice. I'm going straight down in between the two rib bones. And as you can see, there's still a nice amount of moisture in there. We've got a small smoke ring around the outside. I was expecting a little bit more of a smoke ring on there, but because we're only using them cherry chips, it's not got in very deep. If I was using cherry chunks, it would have got in deeper, but we do have that really nice deep pink um, ring just sort of around the outside. What I was surprised with was that membrane at the bottom as I was slicing through it, you could really sort of hear it crunch as it crisped up underneath. And that surprised me because I've cooked like pork ribs with membrane left on the bottom before, and you don't tend to get that crunch as you cut through it. So here is the finished article. So I'm gonna pull a piece off over here. And a nice piece off the end as you can still see there's plenty of moisture in there and this bark is going to be unbelievable the flavor of that rub really complements the meat there's a small amount of citrus in there you can taste the hops it's a fantastic rub and i thoroughly recommend you buying some and giving them a go as i say there will be a link 
in the description below and a discount code for 10% off so make sure you check that out if you like what we're doing here at barbecue life uk then please do subscribe to the channel make sure you like the video let me know what you think thank you very much for watching